Welcome everyone to the course on audio signal processing for music applications. This is an introductory class uh, to uh, audio signal processing uh, in which uh, we will introduce uh, the concept of audio signal processing and then uh, we will go over some common music applications of signal processing. In particular, uh, we will talk about storage, about uh, data compression, about effects and transformations, about synthesis, and finally about description, about audio description. Um, this uh, should give you a flavor of uh, the potential of the field. But first, uh, let's define uh, what audio signal processing is. And a possible definition would be that audio signal processing is an engineering field that focuses on the computational methods for intentionally altering the sounds. So in this uh, block diagram, uh, we could uh, represent the concept of an audio signal processing system that is able to take as input an audio signal, and then using some controls, which could be some human controls or some automatic controls, is able to generate another signal, being uh, an audio signal or being any other type of information. Since audio signals, uh, sounds, uh, may be electronically represented in either digital or analog formats, signal processing uh, may occur in either domain. Uh, analog processors operate directly on the electrical signals, while digital processors operate mathematically on the binary representations of uh, that uh, signal. Um, so let's go a little bit into that concept of analog versus digital signals. Uh, and, uh, an analog sound is usually uh, electrical. Uh, it's a voltage level representing the air pressure waveform of the sound. It is a continuous function, like the one shown uh, on, top, uh, on the top plot. On the other hand, a digital representation expresses the pressure waveform as binary numbers thus as a discrete function, like the one shown in uh, the bottom plot. The digital representation permits the use of microprocessors and computers. Uh, although the conversion from analog to digital can be prone to loss, most uh, modern audio systems use this approach because the techniques of uh, digital signal processing are much more powerful and efficient than the ones uh, based on analog techniques. Uh, so, now let's start going through uh, some common applications of the audio signal processing techniques. Uh, one such application is uh, the storage of sounds, uh, thus uh, their recording and uh, reproduction. Uh, the digital representation of uh, sound waves, uh, such as spoken voice, environmental sounds or music, can be recorded as electrical or mechanical inscriptions in a media and can then be uh, recreated uh, from these uh, inscriptions. So in here we see uh, a picture of uh, an actual uh, CD uh, in which we can uh, encode, uh, we can record uh, a digital representation of uh, an audio signal. Another signal processing application is data compression or also called audio coding. The goal here is to reduce the bandwidth requirements of uh, digital audio streams and the storage size of audio files. There are two types of compression techniques, the ones uh, called lossless, uh, which uh, we do not lose any information with, and the ones called lossy, in which some information at law is lost, but hopefully the information lost is not perceptually relevant. In here, we see an example of a perceptual audio coder e that uh, takes as input uh, file a WAF file. So it takes a file that uh, is just the direct uh, representation of the sound in the digital domain without any compression. And this is the format uh, called WAF. And going through uh, an audio coder, a perceptually based audio coder, is able to convert that file into a much smaller file in the format MP3 
uh, which is a, a, a format that is, uh, is a, a very compressed format uh, that is based on mm, the perceptual characteristics of uh, the sounds. So a number uh, of uh, the basic techniques uh, that we will cover are very much uh, behind uh, audio compression uh, systems uh, like uh, this one. A large group of applications uh, relate to performing sound transformations. This type of applications are used in uh, post-production and in musically uh, creative uh, usages. So, for example, here we see two uh, screenshots of uh, the application Audacity, um, in which uh, it includes uh, several plugins, it includes several uh, type of uh, applications that uh, transform uh, audio signals. Uh, so, for example, in the, in the left, we see uh, a dynamic uh, compressor, and on the right, uh, we see uh, a reverb. So these are two um, types of transformations we can do uh, using audio signal processing techniques, but there are many others. Uh, and, and these would include uh, like echo or uh, equalizer or a flanger or a phaser, chorus, pitch shifting, time stretching, voice effects, 3D audio effects, morphing, and many more. Uh, in, uh, in this course, we will target a few of uh, these applications and most of the methods uh, explained uh, have a lot of possibilities in uh, this area. Okay, um, one of the traditional uses of uh, signal processing is related to sound synthesis. Thus, with the aim to generate sounds, either by imitating existing sounds or uh, for creating new timbres. So here we show um, three block diagrams of uh, three different uh, synthesis techniques. Uh, on the left uh, top is, uh, is the, the diagram of subtractive synthesis, in which we start from a rich sound and we filter out components of that rich sound to create uh, another sound. Or on the top right uh, we see the FM synthesis which is based on modulating uh, one oscillator by another one, uh, modulating the frequency of uh, an oscillator and thus uh, obtaining uh, quite a, a wide uh, variety of uh, sounds uh, using uh, this technique. And on the bottom uh, we see uh, a block diagram of what is known as additive synthesis uh, which maybe is the most intuitive uh, kind of synthesis because it's based on just adding some uh, sinusoids by uh, adding some oscillators and uh, therefore uh, creating a complex sounds uh, out of the summation of uh, very uh, simple sounds. But again, there are many other uh, synthesis techniques uh, that uh, have been developed uh, through the years and this includes uh, granular synthesis, uh, the idea of physical modeling or wave shaping or sampling or what is called spectral synthesis and also again uh, many more uh, have been uh, developed and uh, could be mentioned and we will develop and use some of these techniques in our course especially additive synthesis and subtractive synthesis the last group of applications that I want to mention are related to sound description with uh, techniques for analyzing audio signals with the goal to describe and model meaningful characteristics of the sound. Uh, this is a topic that has expanded enormously in the last few years and that is very relevant in the field of information retrieval or also what is uh, called music information retrieval. So in here, for example, we see a block diagram of uh, an algorithm that is able to extract some meaningful musical concept, in particular the concept of the key of a piece of music, what relates to the harmony or the, the chords of, uh, of, of some uh, fragment of a piece of music, um, from the audio signal. So it starts from uh, an audio signal and then it performs different um, analysis uh, steps and is able at the end uh, to identify 
this uh, key of a piece of music, which is quite useful and quite relevant for a number of applications. But when we talk about descriptions, uh, there is a lot of types of descriptions that we can, uh, we can have of a particular audio recording. And uh, typically, we refer to different levels of descriptions. We refer to low-level uh, descriptors, and uh, we refer to descriptors such as loudness, timbre, pitch, uh, which are very much coming from the audio signal. Or we can refer to uh, what we call mid-level descriptors that are more musically meaningful and, and talk about concepts like rhythm, harmony, uh, or melody. And finally, we can talk about uh, high-level uh, descriptors, things that are much closer to, to us, to our perception of music. And uh, these might relate to concepts like genre or the motions of a piece of music or the concept of similarity, what is uh, similar uh, to what. Um, so the automatic description of uh, sounds uh, will be an important uh, application uh, of the topics uh, covered in this course. We will not be able to go over the extraction of uh, mid and high level features of a signal, but the discussions that we will have on the analysis of low level features are at the basis of the general topic of sound and music description. And uh, this is all for uh, the, the example applications I wanted to mention. And in terms of uh, references and credits, uh, there is a lot, uh, of course, uh, that uh, overviews and um, information about audio signal processing. Uh, a good overview uh, reference is the audio signal processing entry in Wikipedia. And uh, all the software that uh, we will use in class is open source, uh, like the program um, Audacity, which I showed uh, a couple of uh, screenshots uh, from, and that can be downloaded uh, from this uh, uh, link. And uh, finally, um, all the, the slides and the code uh, that uh, we are going to be using in this, uh, in this course is also available openly. Uh, under uh, a Creative Commons uh, license, uh, attribution non commercial share alike uh, for the, the slides and the documentation, and for the code that we'll be using, uh, is, uh, the, the license will be a Fero GPL, which is a, a very typical open license, and all the code uh, that, uh, and slides that we'll be using is available from this uh, GitHub uh, uh, account. And that's all. Uh, that's all for this lecture. Uh, I tried to give you uh, a very brief overview of what audio signal processing is, giving examples of some application areas. And hopefully this has motivated you to continue in the course and, uh, and uh, to convince you that it's worth uh, the effort that you will have to dedicate uh, to it. So see you uh, in the uh, next class. Bye-bye.